What is up YouTube and all my fish keeping friends? How is everybody doing out there in fish tank land? Today we're going to use hormones to induce breeding and tetra fish. Don't go anywhere. All right, so for many of you that do watch my channel regularly for the last year, you probably know that I have this nano blue tetra. It's Titotrix tampa potensis. I collected it about two years ago in southern Peru and the Madre de Dios River Basin. But I'm trying to come up with a way to get this fish to breed for me uh, more regularly uh, on a trigger. And so what I'm gonna try to do today is use the hormones from one of my fry tanks and add it to one of my newly established breeding tanks with about six fish and adult fish obviously and see if that will induce breeding in these fish so let's go check out these fish here on the bottom rack we have these two tanks on the left hand side we have the fry tank and if i get up close and i zoom in you should be able to see all these fry now you're going to see about a hundred plus adolescent fry in this tank uh, there's a lot of microscopic fry floating at the surface in this aquarium there's 200 to 300 fish in this tank, to be completely honest, if you were to count every single one of them. Uh, but the goal is, is to take about three to five gallons of water out of this aquarium and add it to this tank here, which is another 10 gallon aquarium. There's about, actually, honestly, I think they have about five or six fish in here. Uh, I think there's more females than males in this aquarium right now but I have not seen any fry at the surface there's no signs of successful breeding right now uh, so the goal is yeah we're gonna take some water from here we're gonna add it to this and uh, we're gonna see if within a reasonable amount of time if it'll actually if it'll actually work I am so excited to have this tank of tetra fry it's been so awesome to watch like ha having like 150 of these little baby tetra fry in this tank kind of schooling and creating their own new colony honestly uh, one of my end goals is to have an aquarium with about 150 200 and a school in like a, a 150 or a 200 gallon aquarium and in the aquarium next to my fry tank i have my fourth breeding tank of nano blue tetras uh, this tank has about five fish in it right now i think it's actually three females and two males right now uh, i have not seen any signs there's no evidence of breeding in this aquarium i truly believe that some of the hormones from this fry tank will actually induce spawning in this new breeding tank so it's pretty simple you guys I've got a clean, sterilized five gallon bucket right here. I'm gonna go ahead and use one of my pythons here. And I'm literally just going to get it going. And I'm gonna take some water from here. Like I said before, I'm gonna go ahead and go for three, four gallons. Uh, and then I'm gonna do a water change on this fry tank here. And not going to do anything here the water from this five gallon bucket is going to be the top off for this tank and that's what's hopefully going to induce uh, breeding in these nano blue tetras so you can see that there is one fry in this five gallon bucket that accidentally got sucked up there's so many fry in this tank so the goal here is to remove enough water from this tank to top off this tank so you can see here the water level uh, to top this tank off here, we've got about two inches or so. So I'm going to go ahead and let this tank drop about two inches. And that should go ahead and completely top this tank off. But it's going to be topping this tank off with water from a tank with about 200 plus fry of that species. So uh, there should be a strong level of hormones from these adolescent fish in the water column. You can see here that I've removed about two inches of water out of the fry tank. It's in this five gallon bucket. We're gonna go ahead and add it to this aquarium. Okay, it seems like the smartest idea here is for me to go ahead and take this five gallon bucket and put it up above this tank. 
I'm going to reverse the python, put the python on the bottom of the bucket, and I'm going to go ahead and slowly add this water to this aquarium. So I've added all of the water from the fry tank into this tank. Actually, I have a little bit left, but I did pretty good. So I'm adding fresh RODI water to the fry tank. I'm going to go ahead and top that off. It's really important to be doing your water changes with your fry tanks. It's really important to be adding that fresh water. Uh, those hormones can actually stunt the growth of those fry. It can actually have an effect on, on the growth for sure. So I like to do water changes about every other day to every three days on my fry tank, no matter what. It just, it just really helps speed up the growth. That along with good quality foods uh, it makes all the difference as far as I'm concerned. It'd be really cool to see if this new fry tank actually does start to show some fry within about the next four to five, maybe seven days. I think that that would probably be evidence of this actually working. So there's been so much crazy stuff going on in my life right now beyond fish keeping. I don't want to bore you guys with that, but I'm taking on a little bit of a job on the side to make a little bit more money. My end goal here is to create a little bit of a nest egg to take with me to Vermont and just have a little bit of residual income, uh, just using some of my past uh, knowledge with, uh, in, the, in the food industry and things like that. It is most definitely my goal to not let this job uh, opportunity distract me from my fish and distract me from my content here on YouTube. So I'm gonna hustle super hard so I can keep this content rolling and do my day job at the same time. Besides that, I wanna give you guys a little bit of an update of everything I've got going on in the fish room right now. We have the grow out tubs over here in the corner and they're doing pretty good. We've got the leucistic guppies, we've got wild guppies, we've got more wild guppies. Um, all of my imperial tetras in this black water aquarium, you can't really see what's going on in here. Uh, but if I get the camera angle just right, we can see that there is a spawning mop in this aquarium. These imperial tetras, the, uh, these are negrosinctus, uh, they are most definitely mature and they're almost three inches. Uh, the, you know, I really plan on getting them to spawn in this spawning mop. If nothing else, once I get them up to Vermont, we're going to get these fish to spawn. Now, obviously, these were wild caught, collected in Peru, and uh, it's just it's a goal of mine, a big goal of mine, to get these fish to uh, to to breed, to spawn in the, in a spawning mop or whatever. Uh, maybe plants will end up being the trick because these are wild fish. Uh, so besides that, we have the 29 gallon bow face tank. It's super happy right now. Everything except for a couple of plants. We'll get into that. This is a, a, a video coming up pretty soon. We gotta do something different. I'm really curious what you guys think I wanna do to change this scape. Uh, there's something about it I'm not too happy about and I'm just curious if you guys know. Please let me know in the comments below if you know what it is that I that I want to do to change this scape. Everybody in the rack here on the wall is doing good. <laughs> My goal is to actually see if I can sell this whole rack as one as is one sale, you know. I'm probably going to have to go ahead and just give it away, but we'll see what happens here. It might be tank by tank. Uh, Elliot is doing good up here. He's not eating. Unfortunately, you guys, he's still not eating for me. I know he will. He acts like he wants to eat. He comes out. He's not out right now, but usually he's poking out through that fake log and he's just like, he acts like he's begging for food. But if I put, if I put food right up to his face, he, he's not eating it. So we'll get there. We'll get there. Um, the paludarium is doing good. I'm just happy that so many of the plants are doing well. It's really foggy, so you can't see much in there right now. The humidity is pretty high. Uh, but I look, it's going to be crazy. I don't look forward to it. Uh, it's going to be crazy uh, having to tear this thing apart. And uh, I'm probably just going to have to get rid of it all together. But I think I'm going to make a video as I break it down to show you guys basically in reverse how I built it. Because that was before YouTube. That's a 
pre-YouTube. So uh, it'll be interesting when I break that down uh, when it comes to uh, moving and relocating. The yellow King Kongs are doing good over here. They're, the bacteria bloom acts like it wants to go away sometimes. It starts to clear up if I just leave it alone. I think I'm gonna just gonna, I'm gonna try to do a little bit of a top off and that's it. No water change, just a top off and see if it'll actually go away. It's actually getting a little bit lighter. So I'm kind of getting excited about that. Uh, I definitely need to do a top off here and a little bit of fertilizer in this tank. That's me slacking for sure, slacking. Uh, once again, we gotta do something with this tank, you guys. I think we're gonna go black water. I think uh, a lot of the comments I've received from people have been saying black water as well. So I think the vote is black water on this aquarium. So uh, we'll see. We'll see what we got going on there. Everybody here in the kitchen is doing good. Obviously, all of the nano blue tetras are happy. I'm seeing new fry in all of these tanks since I've removed the majority of the fry down to the new fry grow out tank. I'm seeing new fry here, new fry here, and there's actually fry in the third tank now, which makes me really excited. We'll see what happens down here with the fourth tank. Now that we've added hormones to it, we'll see what goes on there. I will definitely share all of this with you guys. Uh, up here in this 10 gallon aquarium, we have some guppies that I collected not too long ago. Uh, these are a domestic uh, mix, a domestic guppies mixed with some black bar endler that I had growing out and I grow out pond and you know I shared that with you guys in a video last week you guys can check that out in the card above but they're doing pretty good now you can see here that I do have Elodia in this aquarium the pond weed as it's commonly known I have not had this plant in my fish room for quite a long time for way over a year and what's really interesting is about four years ago I gave a little piece or two, a couple of little cuttings to a friend of mine, Deanna, which she watches my tanks when I'm out of town. And she has cultivated so much of it in her little grow out tubs throughout her property. I did a video about that. I'll put a link to that as well in the cards above. And, uh, you know, I went ahead and took a couple of cuttings, just a little bit of it, and I'm putting it here in this quarantine tank with these guppies for now. Just for the fun of it, I'm super excited to have this back like in my collection of plants. My killifish are doing well in their shoebox totes here. Uh, all these plants are doing pretty good in these vases as well. The hydrogen peroxide definitely made a difference. Uh, but they're balancing out. I could definitely add a little bit more water to that. You can see that the pennywort, that the uh, hydrocotyl Japanese, is doing pretty okay outside of the water, as well as the hygrophila angustifolia that is starting to grow immersed out of this uh, round bowl. <laughs> My blue bolts are so super happy right now. It's so nice to see them out and about. And of course, they're not out and about right now, but. Uh, they've been so much more active and I've seen a couple of females that seem to be buried so that makes me really excited. Uh, I'm kind of bummed to have to move them just when I'm starting to get them uh, breeding again. I do know that once I get back to the States I'll be able to play a little bit more with my Caradina shrimp. Uh, but you know it's just one step at a time but uh, I definitely look forward to doing more of that once I'm stateside. Well, I have to say, you guys, I am so kind of frazzled right now. There's so much going on. This is a, a culmination of so many things. I'm really, really excited, though, and I'm really happy to be able to share this experience with you guys, uh, me moving back to the United States from here in the Caribbean, which I've lived here for about 20 years right now. Um, it's, a, it's a big move. It's really exciting. And uh, once again, I'm really excited to be able to share it with you guys share this journey, this passion project of working with fish and uh, working with animal education, with young people and conservation with fish. This is, this is so exciting. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Thank you to all of you that like, comment, and share all of my content. It means so 
much to me. Thank you to all of my patrons out there. Thank you to all of my members and just all of you, all of you out there that just leave a little comment or give this video a like. Thank you so much. Uh, and remember guys, keep your tanks clean, your fish fed, and have.